If you're trying to grow your account on YouTube, here are five things that you're gonna wanna avoid if you want to get subscribers. Hey, I'm Katie Steckley. Here on my channel, I love to talk all things travel and filmmaking. Make sure that you stick around and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. I post every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. I just wanna make a disclaimer before we jump in that these five things are things that you shouldn't do on YouTube if you want to grow an audience. If you were just on YouTube for the fun or the joy of creation, and it's really just a hobby for you, then don't worry about these tips. These are really things that I think small YouTubers should avoid if they want to grow an audience. So let's get into it. Number one, only vlog if you're starting out. Here's why I think this is a bit of an issue. Most people that are searching out new content on YouTube are very unlikely to click on a vlog of someone that they have never seen before. There's obvious exceptions for people like Jake Paul or Casey Neistat or whatever, because people probably have heard about them before, which is gonna make them curious to watch a video. But if they see a vlog come up in their related videos from someone that they have never heard of, it's gonna be really hard to get them to click on that. I mean, think about it, if you were doing that, would you just click on a random person's vlog? Maybe not. Vlogs are really great for captivating an audience that you have already found and bringing them more into your life, sharing more of your story. But it can be really hard to capture a new audience when you're just sharing what you've done in your day. There are definitely ways to get around this. For instance, you can create vlogs that also have some kind of value proposition. Cody Warner is an amazing example of this teach something, give some kind of motivation, but make sure that that value proposition is clear in the title and thumbnail, and it'll make it a lot easier for your potential viewer to commit and click on your video. The other reason why this is honestly making things harder for yourself if you just do vlogs is that titles and descriptions for vlogs are not gonna be very keyword heavy, they're not gonna be SEO friendly, and you're not gonna show up in search because nobody is searching like, OMG, you won't believe this happened or whatever. Once they're subscribed to you and they see a title like that, then they are more likely to click on it than say a title like how to use a road mic or whatever. But even so, depending on your audience, they are gonna go for the searchable stuff too because it's useful to them. So just focus on providing value and providing a clear value proposition so people know what your video is about. Number two, having a variety channel. I know this sucks, trust me, I feel you. It's very hard to pick a niche, but I think if you wanna grow quickly, it is the most important thing you can do. Now let me just say that I really do believe once you have a solid audience in place, there is a lot of room to expand outside of your niche experiment, try something different. And I do think that once your audience is attached to you, they will come along for the ride no matter what direction you go. But in the beginning, it is a lot easier to gain an audience in a community around a very specific topic because people are more likely to subscribe to you if they know what they're gonna get from you. So if everybody knows that when they come to my channel, they're gonna find videos about filmmaking, travel, like talking about YouTube, talking about Instagram, you know, they have an idea of what they can expect. They're more likely to subscribe because there's a constant sort of value proposition going on there. But if I'm all over the place, people don't really know what to subscribe for. And so they're less likely to. Number three is trying to do sub for sub. I am shocked when people are out there still trying to do this. I felt like it was left behind in like 2011, but apparently not. It's very important when you're approaching other people in the community at large on YouTube that you are not simply asking for support. I think it's really important to go out there and serve others and you will be surprised at how much you get returned from that. So don't think that you need to go out there and be really like stingy about your time and energy just asking other people to do stuff for you. If you go out and wholeheartedly support other people, that is gonna be way more helpful to you in terms of growth than just going around asking for subscribers. I got a message on Instagram like a couple weeks back saying like, oh, let's, let's, let's support each other on YouTube. And I was like, yeah, sure, I guess. Uh, what's your YouTube channel about? Like, oh, I don't know, not really much. Like I just started it. Get your stuff together, lady, and then let's worry about supporting each other. So don't get out there and get greedy and just think that you need to like gain all these subscribers. Like go and give people value and the subscribers will come. Number four is drag other YouTubers or copy other creators. This is a tough one because I'm gonna be honest, a lot of people do grow by making commentary videos about people like Jake Paul, Casey Neistat, famous people, because it's leveraging their existing audience to your advantage. If I put Casey Neistat in this title, 
I all of a sudden have way more people who might be interested in clicking on it than when it was just my face. So I get why a lot of people do this, but the reason why I would caution against doing this is because I think it's gonna make you less credible in the YouTube community at large once you do grow. For instance, for me, like a big part of my goal as becoming a, a YouTuber and growing my audience is getting to collaborate with other creators, going to events like VidCon and Buffer Festival where I might get to meet other creative people like me. Like that's a, a big part of it for me as I appreciate the community. And I think if I was going around making like call out videos or like commentary on these other YouTubers, like they're never gonna wanna associate with me at like events like that. So if you have any kind of interest in being a part of the community at large or collaborating and making friends, I think that it's not a good idea to copy or like complain about other people. Even if you are making videos about people that you could never see yourself associating with or becoming friends with, other people who you might become friends with, I think, will see those videos and think, oh, that's how you talk about other YouTubers. Like, I just think it's always better to have kindness and generosity as your main policy. So try to avoid making a commentary channel, I guess, unless it's positive. There are really great ways to talk about other YouTubers. I think if you want to shout out some of your favorite creators, you know, that kind of thing, like that's cool. I think a great example of this is Audrey Ember, who's a really great creator on YouTube. And she's a series where she basically tries to do part of the creative process of another YouTuber and take that as like a learning moment to expand her own skills. So she created Dan Mace's intro. She did a video with Sarah Dietschy talking about her creative process. So there are definitely ways to sort of incorporate your favorite YouTubers and try to reach out to their audience. But I would caution doing that in a way that isn't respectful because you're not gonna look good to everybody else. And um, your favorite YouTuber might not like it if you just straight up copy them. So just be aware of that. Try, really try to get there on your own merit and not on the backs of other people. The fifth and final thing that you should never do as a small YouTuber who is trying to grow on this platform is quit. I know, maybe it sounds cheesy, but I really do believe it. I think so many of us get discouraged because we don't grow as fast as we want to, but the fact of the matter is, most of the people that we look up to on this platform that have a high number of subscribers have been making videos for years or at least have been building up the skills and the talent that they use to make their videos for years before they even started a channel. So try not to get ahead of yourself. Don't be six months in and only have like 100 subscribers and feel like, oh, I might as well quit. Like, don't do that. Know that I here right now have not even hit 3,000 subscribers yet and I have been making YouTube videos since like 2009. So it has been a long time and I know I haven't been consistent. There's a lot of reasons why I haven't grown. So take my warnings and advice um, because I think if I would have started off with these principles in mind 10 years ago, I would be at a lot different place right now. So if you want to make the most of your time, if you really want to make this YouTube thing happen, then you know, follow the advice I said previously, but most importantly, don't quit. Don't give up on yourself. You need to give yourself a fair chance at this and it's gonna take time. All right, those are all my tips for today. If you want to know what you need to know before you start a YouTube channel in 2019, check out this video right here. I think it'd be really helpful for you, but before you go, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future videos. I post every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. Thanks so much for watching. As always, I hope you're having adventures and following your dreams and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.